Hey everyone, Joel Castro here, welcoming you back to yet another video vlog. Finally, it's been so long since I've done one of these, and I've wanted to do one of these for a while, so I figure, you know, I'll get started. Uh, I apologize for the really clunky headset I got going here. Uh, my uh, regular, uh, uh, fuck. <laughs> my regular uh, laptop microphone isn't working well. Well, probably because I messed up the settings with this thing, but, you know... <clears throat> this sounds better, so I'm just going to keep up with it. Now today, I'm going to do a video review. Again, <laughs> what I usually do. Uh, today, I'm going to review the game Dishonored. Yes, I have played it, I have beat it. I know it's a little late for it, but I feel I should review it. The long story short, it's a surprisingly great game. At least for me. I know there are going to be some people who are like, ah, oh, Stealth Purists, you know, Stealth... The only two Stealth games even worth mentioning are like Thief 2, The Dark Project, or uh, the Metal Gear Solid series. But, you know, Dishonored has, can get mentioned too. I mean, it has great stealth mechanics, uh, great gameplay, uh, both stealth and action, and uh, as well as, you know, a decent story, uh, great art design, uh, a great ambient score, likable characters, even if some of them are a bit forgettable. But, you know, this game just gives you so many options and the freedom of gameplay choice that, I don't know, I just love it. <clears throat> Alright, so let's get to the story. First off, you play as Corvo Atano. He is the personal bodyguard for the Empress of, a, of the city of Dunwall. Now, you gotta picture Dunwall, like... A Victorian era city with a lot of cyberpunk and steampunk elements. You have robot drones patrolling the city. You have uh, arc towers that act as like fences that can kill you in one hit. And, you know, just the grimy, gritty design of this place is phenomenal. And <clears throat> I'll get to the graphics in a second, but let's get on with the story. Um, on a return. Corvo has returned on a trip to, from some other cities in order to find the cure for this rat plague that has been terrorizing the city for a long time. When he gets back to the Empress with this news, he, he, they are all of a sudden attacked. Uh, the Empress gets killed. Her daughter, who I believe is uh, Emily, her name is Emily, and the daughter gets kidnapped. The Empress gets killed, and Corvo having been captured by the uh, guard, is he gets blamed for it. He gets blamed for the death of the Empress and the kidnapping of Emily. And so they hold him in prison, he breaks out, and thus decides, with the group of this underground society, <clears throat> with the help of this underground society, that wants to overthrow the new government that's been implemented in Dunwall ever since the Empress's death, uh, he's going to take revenge on the people who wronged him kill the Empress for real, and get his name back, get his status back. As revenge stories go, it's simple, effective. It doesn't have too many emotional tones, except for his relationship with Emily, which I, I admit, it can get pretty touching sometimes. It's pretty realistic. And so, yeah, that's a story for you. Now, the graphics. Pretty damn good. Uh, the visuals are impressive on the art design scale. The lighting, uh, the texture... No, 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 no. Uh, the lighting, you know, the effects, the characters. They're kind of caricatured, almost like Bioshock. But it, it works well for the style that they're trying to implement. The graphics aren't perfect. There's a lot of texture pop-in or sometimes textures that won't even come in at all. Now, this is an issue with the game engine probably because this appears on all versions of the game. Xbox, uh, PS3, and PC. The PC seems to have this a little less, but it's still present. Alright, now, for the actual gameplay. This game has stealth mechanics. You know, you can sneak around in the shadows, crouch. Uh, they have the system called the, le the leaning system, where if you are <clears throat> behind some form of cover, uh, you can press triangle, or Y on the Xbox version, and you can lean left or right, to see who who's in the room, what they're doing, follow their patterns. They won't notice you, but you will notice them. And that's I think that's a neat feature. Uh you can run, you can skip 
You could scale walls. Uh, not Assassin's Creed style, because this is all in first person. And, uh, yeah, there you can climb buildings uh, to sneak, sneak your way past uh, guards on the ground. And... Uh, shit, I'm brain farting here. <laughs> yeah, you can... The sneaking mechanics in this game work very well. And the enemies, they're very alert for the most part. And my my only issue is that sometimes they're not as alert as you'd like them to be. Uh, they can... Uh, you can be in their peripheral vision sometimes, and they won't notice you. Which is great for getting past them, but, you know, it's just one of those little hiccups that, you know, you have to mention. It doesn't break the game at all, because... For the most part, like 90% of the time, they're alert and out looking for you if they spot you the first time. Uh, you can go up to them, you can, uh, you know, give them a sleeper hold, knock them out, and uh, you can hide them from other guards, or use them to distract other guards so you can get inside a building, or get into a next area of the game that has, you know, a specific amount of guards that you would find impossible, but... Yeah, it gives you that much choice, especially in the level design, which you can basically climb anything in this game, any building. Now, if enemies do spot you and get you in a fight, fear not, because it doesn't pull the Metal Gear Solid bullshit of making it so that you can never survive those encounters. You can actually fight back. Yes. You are given a sword, a pistol crossbow, a grenades... You can find all these things, although you always have your sword on you, and you can fend them off. Uh, it basically, it's basically first-person uh, mechanics, kind of like Skyrim, except a little smoother. And it gives you a, it gives you a guard button so that you can uh, counterattack enemies. You can guard, stagger them, and then go in for the killing blow. And I think that's really cool. It's very, uh, very flowing. Uh, not too difficult, but, again, these enemies can provide a challenge if you go into a fight. Now, this game also has supernatural elements, which, for the most part, are awesome. You have this blink ability, which allows you to teleport sec fr from place to place very fast. Good for uh, scaling buildings or silently sneaking past guards. Uh, you also you can summon rat swarms to kill your enemies. You can slow down time. You can see through walls, all of which uses a magic meter. And uh, yeah, all these things make it awesome. Uh, seeing through walls is good for stealth. The rat swarms are good for taking care of enemies. And all this is done with great animations. Uh, a very except very good frame rate, 30 frames per second, which is you know the standard. Uh, it the frame rate doesn't drop too much at times unless there's a lot going on, especially in the PS3 and the Xbox versions. But you know it's nothing that will break the game for you, uh, to be honest. And yeah, another thing to take note is that there's a morality system in this game, but it's not like other morality systems you've probably used. Uh, for the most part the morality system in this game is based off of how many people you kill and how much destruction and chaos you cause. If you go through the game without killing anyone, uh, which is possible, I've tried it and have come pretty close, <laughs> But or you can go all sorts clashing, you know, murdering, maiming everybody in sight, and... But the thing is, doing that makes the game a lot harder later because more enemies are added more rats are added which means they will attack you swarm you and it overall makes the game very difficult again if you're an action junkie that's actually pretty cool because if you're still gonna go try maiming and murdering everybody you have that option you have the option to just murder everybody in sight but story wise it gets you a pretty shitty ending <laughs> not gonna lie uh it doesn't satisfy as much as the good ending satisfies, uh, if you can believe that. <clears throat> but for what it is, the stealth mechanics work very well. And if you want to go all stealth, that's the best uh, option to go story-wise and gameplay-wise, if you're into that sort of thing. If not, gameplay-wise, you can go 
uh, killing everybody in sight, destroy destroying everything, causing a lot of chaos. And again, f for the gameplay, that works very well. For the story, not so much. All of this is done with great sound design, a very ambient uh, type of score for the game, very atmospheric, atmospheric, and yeah. Another gripe I have, Corvo doesn't talk. He's another silent protagonist where things happen around him. He wears a cool mask that, mask that you don't get to see, you don't get to hear him, and he's the protagonist of the game. Kind of bugs me. But all these things, all the negative things I've said about the game, don't detract from the overall fun that you can have. Uh, the gameplay is great. The story is very good. It, it can get forgettable at parts, but, you know, it's just there to drive the gameplay along. And it's very satisfying, gameplay-wise. There's so much experimentation to do. Uh, you have many options in order to play the game. And... All of that earns earns an eight out of eight point five out of ten from me. Eight point five out of ten. It's not a perfect game by any stretch of the definition, but I think it is just too much fun to pass up. Some of you might not like the stealth mechanics, that's okay. Some of you might not like the action compared to other games. That's okay. This is just my opinion of the game. I love it. Not as much as some other games that came out last year, but I do love it. And there you have it. That's my review. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Until then, this is Master Middle Triple Seven, Joel Castro, signing off. Later.